Okay guys, so we're gonna start from very very beginning. So if you are more advanced user and you are looking for some advanced tricks, please check the description down below uh, where you're gonna find the agenda for this tutorial and you're gonna find the link so you could directly jump into more advanced setup. Uh, but as I said, we're gonna start from very very beginning. So. If you are just starting your journey with uh, programming, you just learn basics of HTML and JavaScript, it's um, it's highly possible that you, you, you played with JS and you did something like script tag and then let's say we have a variable like let a equals 5 and you want to somehow verify what's the value, right? You did some math on this variable and you want to check how it looks like so obviously you can't see the value from HTML itself so you have to do something very often we do alert so we do alert a and then once we save and refresh the page it's gonna alert this to us but this is not recommended way especially um, I mean there are multiple reasons but for example it doesn't support complex objects so let's say that instead of just simple variable we have something more complex like let's say uh, one and some value and now we're not gonna see this value because this object and alert doesn't support objects so what you can do instead uh, then you learn about console uh, so what you do you do console log and then you can output something so we do something like that but then the question is how you can see the result because obviously you can see them here so in order to see result we have to open our console so we go to uh, more tools to settings then more tools and then developer tools that's going to open us uh, this either tab or window depending on your configuration you can have it stacked like here or you can have it uh, in a separate window like I have right now. And what you can see here is this line, which matches with um, our line. You can see where does it come from. So it's index.html, which is our file. And then it shows us line number 12. And this is obviously correct. Now, this console can uh, really do a lot because what you can do here, you can directly write a Java script code over here so you can say let b let's say b equals uh, 10 and then you can do some any actually you can run any javascript over here so you can do like b times 2 and you can see the result even without submitting the enter hitting the enter button Pardon my interruptions for a moment, I just wanted to let you know that besides this video, we also released a lot of different tutorials, especially you should check our Bootstrap 5 Crash Course, which we released recently. If you want to watch this video, you're gonna find the link somewhere over here or in the description down below. This is a perfect tutorial for the people who haven't used Bootstrap 5 or Bootstrap at all in the past, as well as for those who've been using Bootstrap for, for some previous projects and would like to know what has changed. And believe me, a lot has changed in newest Bootstrap 5. This video and this tutorial obviously is completely free for everyone. It's available on the YouTube. And if you would like to support us uh, to help us creating more tutorials and materials like this video and the Bootstrap 5 course, you should also try our MDB UI kit, which is available also for free as an open source. You're gonna find a link to this project down below. So give it a try and I'm sure you're gonna love it. Okay, so now once we know how console log works and and where should we look for it let's have a look what we can do what we can achieve with uh with it so uh one thing you've already seen is that we can uh, output uh, any kind of text into uh, our console so it obviously support text uh, it also support the variables so if we say a now it's gonna output our variable and you already see that it supports objects. So um, obviously if we have something like let a equals five and then let b equals 10, then we can obviously output these variables. We can also mix our content. So we can mix text with the 
Uh, variables, there are a few ways to do it. So one thing is, uh, one way is to type text using quotation marks and then you can uh, use addition, so plus, and then provide a variable name. So we can say something like the a value is and then we're gonna get something like that. The value is five. Obviously you can combine multiple arguments here so then you can add another text in quotation and b value is but you can already see the one disadvantage of this you have to maintain spaces by yourself so you have to remember to add space at the very beginning and the very end otherwise they're gonna look bad so this is one thing there is another way uh, what you can do you can provide uh, value as a second argument so after the comma you specify a variable and this will also work pretty much the same except for the fact it's adding uh, space automatically so you don't have to maintain that so you can provide these arguments like that now when it comes to console log um, like this with use of quotes mm, you can uh, also break line uh, you, you have to do slash n and then we're gonna have a new line here so this isn't necessarily mm, very handy so what you can do you can use something which is called template literals uh, so if you learn about javascript uh, you might be familiar with that if not then just have a look at this example so if you do something like this um, the a value is and now we can use our variable simply by using a dollar sign and then providing the parameter like that which obviously makes it much easier because we can uh, keep on writing our text and then just simply add variables and mix it with the content and what is also important here is that it also persists uh, white spaces so if we do it like this the the new line will persist and it's gonna be displayed exactly the same way as we did here okay so now when we know basics let's move forward and let's move to the next mm, next feature of console log or actually console um, but before we move on often when you work with a console and you have a lot of stuff here and you're playing so you are doing some math order here um, you are testing something uh, you are getting some errors like I've just did here and basically you are having a lot of lines and you want to clear your workspace uh, you can do it uh, in two ways so first of all you can just press ctrl plus L on Windows which is gonna clear our console and the same you can um, achieve using command plus K on, if you are working on a Mac so this is gonna clear your console the problem with it is that you um, don't actually know what happened and why the console was cleared because obviously if we refresh the page um, if we have something here whatever I'm gonna just type something which doesn't make much sense but what I want to show you that as soon as you refresh the page you are losing also the entire console here um, so well you can you can uh, check this one so preserve log so then every time you refresh you uh, it's gonna preserve which is important when you are debugging something because then when you move to the next page you don't lose the previous output uh, but usually you uh, by default you're gonna lose that now why I'm talking about it is because uh, you can also use console clear which is gonna do the same for you except um, that it's gonna give this message here that the console was actually cleared now very often we uh, use console to debug something or to find why our program doesn't work and one very very useful um, function which we're gonna use which we can use is called console assert so let's assume that we have this a and b here and we want our c to equals a plus b let's see equals a plus b um, so obviously we expect this to be 
15 uh, but that's obviously um, sometimes doesn't work as expected so what we can do here uh, just to make sure that this math is correct um, then we, we can do something like console assert and pass two arguments so very first argument is a condition so uh, what we want to check is for example we want to check if c actually equals 15 and then as a second argument we will pass some uh, text so let's say whoops we got an error 15 expected but got and then we can obviously pass our value so what's gonna happen here is this um, is that this console uh, won't show until unless this condition is true so as soon as this this is true we're not gonna see this one but as soon as we change this we're gonna get this assertion failed and then we're gonna say that this uh, whoops we've got an error 15 expected but got 14 instead so this is very very useful because obviously uh, when the math is more complex and you are quite sure and you're expecting some value to receive and then you move on but this value uh, got a different uh, value instead um, then uh, you're gonna see uh, exactly where did it go wrong now the next thing you've already seen at the very beginning is that we can seamlessly work with objects so let's use uh, following objects I prepared before and then let's try to console log them so as you can see we can already see what are the values over here mm, so you can nicely see the entire object mm, now let's use a and B so this is gonna be like this mm, you can also display this in other way so if we're gonna use a curly br braces instead and do A and B then they're gonna be collapsed so it's a different way to uh, for showing that but that's not all because as you can see uh, this is already quite readable but we can make it uh, even more readable if we're gonna use function called console table and we're gonna pass uh, this as an argument to our table so we're gonna say let's say our object a and then we're gonna see a nice table like this one and if we have alike objects we can also pass multiple objects and see them in the nice table and verify whether all the values are correct and they are as we expected them and obviously we can still see this as an object what is even more amazing is that if we have array of the objects like this one it will also work so i'm gonna pass this array of the objects and this will also parse it nicely let's move farther even if we have something like array of arrays with objects still our console log or actually console table function can work with it without any issue which you can see already here on the right side so the next very useful uh, especially when it comes to huge projects is console group and group end so this uh, what it does this allows us to obviously to group our uh, console logs into 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 bigger groups which we can collapse so if we are consoling a lot and sometimes when something doesn't work you do a lot of console log it's very handy it's very useful to group them in so that they don't uh, take that much space so if we extend our example to something like that we can see that we have both groups uh, and as you notice there is an arrow next to the label so we can collapse uh, them and expand uh, we can even do nesting so we can do group 
under the group like this one so we have a group here and then group and then we have a group and then group and so this is the inner group and this is the outer group uh, which allows us to maintain our logs in pretty nice order okay so now let's move to something a little bit more tricky but also useful Mm, so what happens is um, that if you have some loop so for let i equals zero i is more than i plus plus and let's log each and every loop so as you can see, we can see this one like this. Um, although we could accept, uh, although we could expect like ten times, um, Chrome is is uh, grouping this by default. But for example, if you like to log multiple things, multiple events in more advanced loops, what we can do is we can use cons count instead. So um, this will basically count how many times we've been looping what we can also do we can add some label to it so we can have uh, separate counters so let's say this is our a yeah this is our b so we can have separate loops for that now what we can do uh, is we can reset um, given counters so if we do console uh, count reset you can see that uh, our all three counters are counting but the default one is resetting so if we add something like if i equals five so we want to reset it every five iterations so one two three four five six uh, actually six because i is zero right so actually every six iteration we are resetting and if you want to reset um, the other counter we need to provide the same label as we used to uh, before so now a is getting reset over here now once we are talking about loops uh, let's move to the next very very useful um, feature of console uh, so basically what we can do we can uh, set up a timer so uh, we've been doing this with counts now let's do this with time so if we could do like console time and give some label to it then again obviously we can have multiple different timers starting at the same time and we want to start this one before our loop and then we want to do console time and for timer uh, at the end of the loop so we see how long did it take so you can see you can measure how fast your function is um, if you want to display time current time but you don't want to stop it you can use console time log which will tell you the current execution time and then obviously the end logs the end one will show you the total execution time which is extremely useful when it comes to optimizing your javascript code the things are getting serious now so let's move to something even more advanced uh, let's um let's assume we have some nested function so i'm gonna have like a function full or outer we could call it uh, which will call function bar inside and here we're gonna do console trace okay and now we're gonna call our function full and obviously inside our full we will need to call our bar function so what console trace does it shows us the entire chain so how the function has been called and who's been calling originally this one so you can see that we have it here so line number 18 exactly 
uh, even if that would be a different file so you would see exactly which file called which function then we have a foo in line number 15 which is calling bar and then we have inside our bar function in the line number 13 we have our console trace so this makes uh, debugging extremely extremely easy now from the very very beginning we've been talking uh, mostly about console alloc function but there are more actually which are not that um, common uh, but they are also very 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 useful and we have more we have console uh, error we also have console info let's call it info then we have console warning actually warn which stands for warning and finally we we have console debug so what what, what are the differences mm. usually when you uh, when you are writing a code uh, you are adding this this logs and they have uh, well different power so depending on uh, what do you want to do um, you want to write it differently so as you can see clearly here um, you have uh, we have error here which uh, browser automatically shows uh, on the red we have a warnings right if we want to warn someone but even more important than just making these colors available for you is that we can um, use or change our uh, debugging level so this is very common for example in other backend application but we can also do that uh, in in front end application so depending on which level we choose as you can see we're gonna see only some custom levels so now i want to see only warning and errors for example right so you have a, a application a lot of logs going on here and let's say you want to see only errors or warnings as you want to debug the most important stuff if you go verbose um, and tick them all you will also gonna get even this debug so the debug is the lowest level and then you have a log um, info warning and the error obviously now talking about colors let's move to another interesting trick so what we can do uh, using console log uh, you've seen already colors you can also achieve them using uh, this uh, small trick so if you pass a uh, percentage c as a parameter or inside the um, quotes then what you can do is you can pass as a second argument uh, css so you can do something like this let's say pink font weight bold uh, let me fix my css and now you can see that our console log change its color and you can really really achieve interesting um, results here so you can go up to something like this um, this is sometimes you can see um, that um, used to warn users for example if you open the facebook and you check the console you're also gonna see something like this um, you're gonna see warnings saying that you shouldn't um, type anything here because there were mm, some mm, you know hackers trying to cheat people asking them to run some javascript inside the browser which uh, was obviously trying to leak some data trying to use some errors in browsers uh, which uh, could possibly give them control over uh, the person uh, computer or account on different portals um, you can use variables here so you can do something like this so you can define your styles and then you can use it like this so c a large text uh, and so on and so on so you can have predefined styles and then just use them uh, at your convenient and finally uh, let me get rid of this and let's do let's console our console and let's see 
what's gonna happen so obviously we're gonna see our console object and you're gonna see all the uh, functions available for you we pretty much cover them all um, if you want to check more like memory uh, so this will print um, you information about the memory um, of the cache and so on uh, so I strongly encourage you to, to check them uh, but we basically covered um, almost all of them so if you enjoyed this video if you uh, watched so far let me know down below in the comments uh, whether or not you knew all of these uh, functions all those tricks for console log and other functions from console uh, object um, hit the like button uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, if you want to see more videos like this check our other videos because uh, we have already uh, plenty of them uh, showing uh, for example the most um, common mistakes in JavaScript which uh, I see too often when I'm doing a code review mm, don't forget to subscribe again and thank you for watching see you in the next video